Hi students, welcome to our physics class. Our chapter name is Electric Current and its Effects. In the last class we started this chapter, now we are continuing this. And today's topic is the Heating Effects. Heating. Heating Effects of Electric Current. So, this is today's topic. And now we can start with an activity. Here I am connecting a bulb. And there connecting a switch. And giving here a set. First of all, this key is open. So this is the circuit. And first you have to do that. Please touch and check the bulb is it hot or not. And that is the first thing we have to do. And we feel there is no hot. Now we want to do that. I am just closing this key. I am just closing this key. And I already said that this is a key. And when I close this key, what will happen? This circuit will be complete and this bulb will glow. Then first you just want to touch it. Just touch. Then, what do you see? You feel that it will start just, there will start heating. That is the second thing. Now you just wait for one minute. That is the third thing you have to do. You just wait for one minute. The bulb is continuously glowing and after that one minute, then again touch it. Then you feel that the heat is again increasing. That is the heat is again increasing. Now you again want to open the circuit. That means we just off it. Then what do you feel? Then the bulb will off. And after one minute, again you touch. Then what will you feel? You will feel that the heat is getting decreased. So, this is a simple experiment that we get identified that there is producing heat when electricity is flowing through this circuit. If there is no electricity is flowing through the circuit, there is no heat is produced. That is the first thing you have to remember. The second thing is that when electricity is flowing, there is certain heat is produced. That is the thing in this experiment. And this can, similarly you can feel from the working of mixer grinder. When the mixer is continuously working, you can feel that the heat is produced. And after some time, when you touch the jar, you feel the heat. The same thing is happening there. Because all the electric devices are producing certain amount of heat when the electricity is passing through. Now we want to do another activity. Here we check the production of electricity on the bulb. And now I am just going to do that. A small change is that I am taking two nails that is fixed on a stand. That means I am just putting two nails here and tying a metal wire of 10 centimeter here. And this metal wire is of nichrome. Nichrome is a type of metal. So, this is nichrome wire. Now, I am doing that. I am taking a simple connecting wire. That is a connector. And just connecting these two with a key and connecting a cell. So, now this key is open. The same thing you 
have to do here that first of all you just touch it and feel what is the temperature here. So first of all it will be cold. That is the first case it will be cold. And now you want to do that just close this key. Just close this key. Then after closing suddenly you just touch. No need of just touching it for a long time. Then it will burn your hands. So just touch. Then you will feel it start heating. So that is the second case that it just start heating. That is the second case. Now in the third case, I am just doing that. I am waiting for 2 minutes. I am waiting for 2 minutes. And then again you just touch. And then you can feel that here the heat is increasing. The heat is increasing. And here increasing the heat. That means when this electricity is continuously flowing through the circuit, then what happens? The increase the heat. So actually here takes place is here producing heat, and we call this is what the heating effects of electric current. So how we can define this term heating effect of electric current? The wire gets hot when an electric current passes through it. That means the wire get hot when an electricity will flow through it. This effect is called heating effects of electric current. Which means that when this electricity is flowing through certain substances, they will produce heat. And as I said that in certain substances means this amount of heat will depend upon different materials. That means in some metals the amount of heat will be less and in some metals it will be high. So that is the thing and we are using this heating effect of electric current in different electronic equipments. Now we are going to look which are the examples for the devices which are using this heating effects. So actually for this heating effects it has both advantages and disadvantages. First of all we are going to look which are the devices we are making it as an advantage. The examples are the one electric electric room electric room heater that is one of the devices which is Using the heating effects of electric current. That is the first one. The next one is that. Electric toaster. Electric toaster. These are the different devices. The third one is. Electric heating cooker. Electric heating cooker. The fourth one is electric water heater. Electric electric water heater. The next one is electric kettle. Electric kettle. Then electric iron hot plates Hot plates, hair dryer, etc. So, these all are the devices which we are using the heat for the application. That means electric room heater, electric toaster, electric heating cooker. All these you want to write the electric also. That means there is also having some solar heater like things or that's why we are all adding this electric room heater, electric toaster, electric heating cooker or electric water heater or electric kettle, electric iron. This electric iron means our iron box and hot plates, hair dryer like all the things we are using this heat as an advantage. So you want to remember the examples of these devices. So, now, in all these devices, there is having 
certain coil of wire in all these devices it is having certain type of coil of metal and that coil we are calling it as element so what is element all the equipments which produce heat contain a coil of wire is called an element so this coil of wire is called element and this all devices having this element and this element is getting continuously when the electricity flows through it it start getting hot and we will say after some time it will get red hot that means when the electricity is flowing through this coil it will get red hot and then it will emit heat that is the thing takes place here so this is all about this area and now the question is what are the things which depends the production of heat what are the things which depend that means the factors factors depending the production of heat the production of heat factors depending the production of heat in these devices so there are different factors the first one is that the material material of wire so for the nichrome wire it produces certain amount of heat for copper it will be different and for other materials like tungsten or gold or silver they are also emit different amount of heat that means this amount of heat is depending upon the material of the substance that is the first point the next point is that in the experiment we said that i am taking a 10 cm length wire so here the length of wire length of wire so actually when we are selecting a small length then it will depend the production of heat and when i am taking a long length wire then it also depends the production of heat so we can say the length of the wire is also depending the production of heat the third point is that thickness thickness of wire so the third factor is that the thickness that means when we are selecting a very nice wire then it will depend the production of heat and when we are selecting a very thick wire for the experiment then it will depend the production of heat so basically there are three factors which depends upon the production of heat first one is the material of the wire the second one is the length of the wire and the third one is the thickness of the wire so these are the factors depending the production of heat and actually normally we are using certain wires in the circuits in our home and that means we are connecting a bulb and with the another bulb using there are in your wall there are having so many wires these wires are generally not producing large amount of heat not actually large they are generally we can say it as they are not producing heat so that means for certain wires they can produce heat and for certain wires they cannot produce heat so for different purposes we are using proper type of metals now this all we discussed about the advantages in some wires when they get hot that means when they get continuously electricity and when they get red hot what will happen there happens that it start to emit light it start to emit light this is not possible for all type of wires in only certain type of wires when they are getting into red hot they will emit light can you say one of the example for this emit light the example is very familiar to you the filament lamp filament lamp 
That means in the filament lamp we have a type of coil. That means we have a type of coil and it will get into red hot and after some time it start to emit light. And actually in filament lamp we are using a metal called tungsten. We are using a metal called tungsten. And actually we are selecting tungsten because this tungsten is having high melting point. What is this high melting point means? High melting point means it can hold high amount of energy which means that it do not melt faster. So when we are saying it is having low melting point means it will melt very fast. Here it is having high melting point means this tungsten will not melt faster and it will hold for long time. And it is about above 3000 Kelvin of heat can hold this tungsten. So that's why we are using this tungsten as the coil in the filament lamp. And now but there is a problem that actually it's a disadvantage that it continuously emit heat also. There is not only the light that produce light but they also produce heat continuously because in the filament lamp it is having an element and it will continuously emit heat for long time. And actually first of all the more is producing is heat and light is less. So actually when we are using such filament lamp, it is some sort of energy losses takes place. That means we are actually losing the electricity for this filament lamp. That means it is continuously emitting heat and most of the energy is losing in the form of heat rather than light. That produce light but most of the energy is losing to produce heat. So that's why we, we are now not using this filament lamp in such a very manner. That is because we are replacing this filament lamp with CFL and LED bulbs. That is because the basic thing is that here the energy loss is very high and in this CFL and LED there is no such most of the energy is losing in heat. So that's why we are using this CFL and LED. Actually so we can say this heating effect is the disadvantage for this filament lamp. Actually there is we are not using this heat in the filament lamp. We need the light but still there is producing heat and most of the energy is losing by this. So that's why we are using the CFL and LED lamp instead of filament lamp in these days. Now the question is what is the full form of CFL and LED? We just look what are the abbreviations for that. So, LED bulb. You are generally saying it as LED bulb. It is <coughs> light. Light emitting diode. That is LED. Light emitting diode. And the next one is CFL. CFL is combat combat fluorescent lamp. CFL is combat fluorescent lamp. Compact fluorescent lamp. And also we are using some tube lights. That is also actually the tube lights means fluorescent tube light. Fluorescent tube light. We generally say it as tube lights. So these are the lights we are generally using nowadays. And you just want to remember this. CFL is compact fluorescent lamp and these tube lights are actually fluorescent tube lights. You don't have to study the working of these or just remember the names. So this is all about this area. And we are using these to save 
the energy and when you are observing these birds you can see an ISI mark on this. What is this ISI mark means? Actually this ISI mark means that it means they are just checking this and they are making sure the solar safe for using and actually also they are making sure that these devices are losing energy in a very small quantity. In all the devices there is having certain type of energy loss that is of course there will occur but here it have a limited value but for this fluorescent lamp it is continuously losing so much energy that's why we are not using that. So this is all about this area. Now we are going to another activity that is in the previous section we just did an activity by fixing two nails on a stand and we just fixed a nichrome wire here I am selecting another type of wire and it is thin strand of thin, thin strand of steel wood. Thin strand of steel wood means very thin wire of steel. Simply just understand like that. So very thin wire. So now I am completing this circuit using certain type of wire. This is not this thin strand of steel wood, simply some sort of wire which conduct electricity. So, I am connecting here with a... In the last experiment, we only connected it with a single cell. Here I am selecting 2, 3, 2, 5, 6. So, I am just connecting many cells and it is actually a battery. So, now I am connecting it with a key. First of all, it is open key and you just want to observe what will happen when we close this key. So, I am just closing the key and you just want to observe. When you observe, you will find that this, this wire will get burnt. This wire will get burnt. That means actually this wire get melt. This wire will get melt. So that is the thing. That means I already said that different metals will behave differently. So this metal is behaving like they are melting and they just burn. So this is the thing that actually this is the happens in a fuse. This fuse is actually familiar to you. I think so. So the same thing is takes place in fuse. That is we are making fuse by using certain type of suitable metals with suitable thickness and length. So now the question is why we are using this fuse in our circuits. In all the circuits we are using certain type of fuse and nowadays we are having certain different type of fuse and we will discuss it later. So why we are using this fuse in our circuit? Now it's enough for today. Today we discussed about different heating effects of electric current. We studied about different equipments that is using this heat as an advantage and in certain type of devices it is also some sort of disadvantage also because when this heat is continuously producing all the devices is producing heat and that will damage the electronic devices. So actually that's a disadvantage also. And the fuse is also one of the application of the electronic devices and we will discuss it in our next class. So you please want to read your textbook 3-4 times and we will meet in the next class. It's enough for today.